I started buying stocks when I was 11. I'd been reading every book in the library on it. I loved it. My dad, you know, it was his business, and I'd get to go down to his office and I'd read the books down there, and I saved the money, and finally, by the time I was 11, I could buy a stock, and I could tell you, I went to New York Stock Exchange when I was nine. My dad took us to New York, each kid to New, New York once, and he took me. I went to New York Stock Exchange, and I was in awe of it. I could tell you how the specialist system worked and the odd lot arrangements, and I could tell you history of finance and all of these things. And then I, then I started, I got very interested in technical analysis and charted stocks and then all kinds of crazy things. Hours and hours and hours. And, and when I was either 19 or 20, and I can't remember exactly, where I did it or something. I picked up a book someplace. You know, I, I looked at this book and I saw one paragraph and it told me I'd been doing everything wrong. I, I just had the whole approach wrong. I, was, I thought I thought I was in the business of trying to pick stocks that would go up. And all of a sudden, you see something different than what you were seeing before. Now, and it took me in stocks, which I was intensely interested in. And I had a decent IQ and I was reading and thinking, and then I read a chapter. I read a paragraph, actually, in chapter eight, I think it was, of The Intelligent Investor. And it just, it told me that I wasn't looking at the duck, I was looking, you know, now it was the rabbit, whatever it may be. If I hadn't read that book, I don't know how long I would have gone on looking for head and shoulders formations and 200-day moving averages and the odd lot ratios and all, a zillion things. And I love that kind of stuff, except it wasn't, it was the wrong stuff. You know what? when you see it, but you didn't see it for 10 years before. And then there's something that it just all gets rearranged in your mind and you, you know, can say, well, why didn't I see this five years ago? Or, but I had a partner. So there's, there is that perceptive mass that's sitting in there inside somehow. And every now and then it produces some insight. It's better actually if it produces insight into your behavior than whether produces insight to make money. I mean, that, that, and some people never get it. Charlie would say, you know, you know, just write your obituary and reverse engineer it. That's something you get wiser on as you uh, go along. The business mistakes, uh, you just want to make sure you don't make any mistakes to take you out of the game or come close to taking you out of your game. You should never have a night when you're worried about uh, investing. I mean, assuming you have any money to invest at all, and you should, you should, you should spend a little bit less than you earn, and you can spend a little bit more than you earn, and then, then you've got debt, and the chances are you'll never get out of debt. Uh, I'll make an exception in terms of, of a mortgage on your house, but, but, credit card debt, and we're in the credit card business big time, and we'll, we'll stay in the credit card business. But why well, get behind the game? And. The world changing doesn't, or new things coming along don't take away the opportunities. What gives you opportunities is other people doing dumb things. Well, the 58 years we've been running Berkshire, I would say there's been a great increase uh, in the number of people doing dumb things, and they do big dumb things, and the reason they do it to some extent is because they, they can get money from other people so much easier than when we started. So you could start, 10 or 15 dumb insurance companies in the last 10 years, and you could become rich uh, if you were adroit at it, whether the business succeeded or not, and the underwriters got paid, and the, the lawyers got paid, and that creates, if that's done on a large scale, which it couldn't be done what, 58 years ago, you couldn't get the money. I don't, I think that investing has disappeared so much from this huge capitalistic market that anybody can play in, but that the big money is in selling other people ideas that isn't outperforming. If I were working with a small amount of money, the universe would be huge compared to the universe of possible ideas I work with now. I think if you're working with a small amount of money with exactly the same background that Charlie and I have, and same ideas, same same whatever ability we have you know i think you can make very significant sums but you but as soon as you start getting the money up into the millions many millions the 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 curve on expectable results falls off just dramatically uh but that's that's the nature of it, it 
when you get up to things you can put millions of dollars into, you've got a lot of competition looking at that and they're not looking as I did when I started. When I started, I went through the pages of the manuals page by page. I mean, I probably went through 20,000 pages uh, in the Moody's Industrial Transportation Banks and Finance manuals. And I did it twice. And I actually you know, looked at every business. I didn't look very hard at some. Well, that's not a practical way to invest tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, so I would say if you're working with a small sum of money uh, that, and you're really interested in, in, the, in the business and willing to do the work, you can, you will find something if you were, I, you, you, there's no question about it in my mind. You will find some things that promise very large returns compared to what we will be able to uh, uh, deliver uh, with large sums of money. The beauty of stocks is they do sell at silly prices from time to time. I mean, that's, that's how Charlie and I have gotten rich. You know, Ben Graham writes about it in chapter eight of, of, uh, of the intelligent investor, you know, next, uh, uh, well, chapters eight and chapters 20 are, the, are really all you need to do to get rich in this world. And chapter eight says that in the market, you're going to have a partner named Mr. Market. And the beauty of him as your partner is that he's kind of a psychotic drunk and, and he will do very weird things over time. And your job is to remember that he's there to serve you and not to advise you. And if you can keep that mental state that all those thousands of prices that Mr. Market is offering you every day on every major business in the world, practically, that he is making lots of mistakes and he makes them for all kinds of weird reasons. And uh, all you have to do is occasionally oblige him when he offers to either buy or sell from you at the same price on any given day.